On this edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at our morning scriptures. Again, some people when they wake up in the morning, they say, good God, it's morning. Other people say, good morning, God, you know. And so, again, to start off, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Now, you're going to see there's so many scriptures that exhort us to rejoice in the present day. So our God is a God who wants to lead us to the land of rest. Our God wants us to find rest, rest for our souls. In Exodus chapter 3, we heard the Lord saying to Moses, He's saying, I'm concerned. The Lord saw the suffering of His chosen people in, in Egypt, and He says to Moses, I'm concerned and I'm going to do something about it. And that's the word the Lord has for each one of us. If we are not living in the rest of the Lord, if we haven't found rest in Him, the Lord is saying to you, I'm concerned. I'm concerned and I want to do something about it. Will you let me do something about it? Will you let me lead you out of the land of slavery so that you can find rest for your souls? Now, the truth is, is that to be in the Lord's presence is to be at rest because our God is a God of peace. And when we allow ourselves to be present to His presence, He lifts us up. When we hear Jesus proclaiming in Matthew, when Jesus says, Come to me, all you who labor and carry heavy burdens, and I'll give you rest, for my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Every one of us have taught, times have said to the Lord, Lord, that's not true. It's not easy. Lord, this is not easy. This is difficult. There's nothing easy about this. What are you talking about? You know what the Lord's response is? He goes back to the beginning. He says, I said, come to me. Come to me. And even in your struggle, even in your brokenness, even in your weakness, you will find rest. But so often, we don't go to the Lord. We don't come to Him like He, he urges us. It doesn't mean the Lord's going to take away our difficulties, our struggles, even our sins. You know, sometimes the Lord allows us to fall into some areas of sin kind of as a safety net. He knows if this guy keeps going the way he's going, he's going to fall into a real big sin. So I'm going to let him fall into a little sin kind of as a safety net to remind him, to wake him up, snap him out of it. So even in our sinfulness, the Lord can be doing a wonderful work of healing, of growth, of, of humbling us, of purification. So again, the Lord doesn't take those things away, but He raises us up. And even in the midst of those trials, He can give us that peace and that rest. We're saying, you know what? In God's perspective, this, this really isn't that big a deal. And so again, this is, this is a grace the Lord wants to give us, the grace of His Spirit to raise us up. And so this is a grace the Lord wants to work. Now I want to give you some, uh, share with you some practical advice from my own experience. And this is very convenient for me because I've been wanting to work on this for the last couple of weeks. Scriptures to start your day with. I've had a few in my journal and in my Treasure in Heaven booklet. I wrote a few, a few in. But you know, if we want to live in the presence of the Lord, a good thing to do is to start our day right away in His presence, remembering His presence. So I always thought to myself, I need some scriptures. I need, as soon as the alarm goes off, I need to turn to scripture. And I, I already do a little bit of that, but I got myself organized. I said, I got, I'm going to be preaching on this tonight. It forces me to get organized. So, um, so anyways, the alarm clock goes off. By the way, if you have one of those alarm clocks that play music, play a good song. A song that will be good. Because, you know, the, the first song you hear in the morning, that kind of sticks with you all day. You know, a few years ago, there was a big song in Canada called, If I Had a Million Dollars. And the song over and over would sing, If I Had a Million Dollars. Have has anyone heard that song before? Some of you. I remember a person complaining. He says, I woke up, my alarm went off, and that song was playing. And all day, all I kept thinking was, if I had a million dollars, if I had, it was so depressing, you know? 
So the song I l- I've been using lately is the, the little jingle for, have you ever heard the song? God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. He cares for me. He cares for me. He cares for me. He's so good to me. Isn't that a nice way to start to start the day? And and I have that throughout the day. That's kind of what's cycling through my mind and my heart. God is so good to me. Only problem is it's such a soothing song, and sometimes it doesn't wake me up too quick, you know. <laughs> Puts you back to sleep, you know. But anyways, so you get up in the morning, and you have to have your scriptures ready. So these are the ones I want to share with you. Uh, first of all, Psalm 118, verse 24. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So important to say, this is the Lord's new day. And again, some people, when they wake up in the morning, they say, good God, it's morning. Other people say, good morning, God, you know. And so, again, to start off, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Now, you're going to see there's so many scriptures that exhort us to rejoice in the present day. I shared with you, I think, a few weeks ago how for me it was revolutionary to, to learn about how Jesus commands us, don't worry about tomorrow. I'm going to talk more about that. Next scripture, Nehemiah 8.10 this day is holy to our Lord, and do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now, I'm using the RSV. This is the NAB you have here. It's a very similar translation. But, but again, this is the day. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not be grieved this day, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Again, the call to joy. You want to have a good day? Rejoice in the Lord. That's our strength. And again, from the moment the alarm clock goes off, rejoice in the Lord. Okay, that's, that's uh, the second scripture. Now the third one, Psalm 31, 30, verse 5, or verse 6, again, depending on the translation. Joy comes with the morning. To just, to just again, from the first moments of the day, enter into the joy of the Lord, and to stand on that word. You know, to say, Lord, Bring your joy. Your word says joy comes in the morning. Let me experience it right now. And then Psalm 113, verse 3. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Now, brothers and sisters, I hope all of you are spiritually mature and awake enough to try to spend your whole day from the rising of the sun to its setting, giving thanks and praise to the Lord. Do you try to do that? Do you try to live your whole day in His presence, rejoicing in Him, thanking in Him? You have to do that. Scripture exhorts us to do that. Our God is all omnipresent. He's with us, and He wants us to be aware of His presence. He wants us to seek His presence constantly, Scripture says. And so again, from from the very moments when we first wake up, as the sun is rising, we remind ourselves from the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. And again, as we remember these Scriptures, they should be giving us grace and power to enter into the day. Uh, the fifth scripture, I'm giving you seven. You know I like the number seven because it's the perfect number and I always turn to number seven. But anyways, Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. Let the day's own trouble be sufficient for the day. This is the NAB translation. The RSV is a, a little nicer. doesn't matter. The point is, is that again, the Lord Jesus he tells us, don't worry about tomorrow. When I began to put that into practice, it was like a mountain in my life was thrown into the sea. Not, the Lord's saying, you know what? You don't even need to worry about tomorrow. Now, He's not saying don't plan or don't prepare for tomorrow, but worrying about tomorrow, Jesus says, don't worry about it. And again, for me, there's such a freedom that I can actually just enjoy today live in the present moment, put in the best day I can, and that's it. 
And for me, again, there was such a freedom. It was like a, a mountain of worry, of anxiety, and whatever just disappeared because I put faith in this word from the Lord. So again, what a way to start your day. You know, this, uh, I'm not going to worry about tomorrow. I'm going to enjoy this day in the Lord. And then scripture number six. In the Our Father, we pray, Lord, give us this day our daily bread. That's Matthew chapter 6, verse 11. Again, the whole spirituality of living day to day, living one day at a time. Notice in the Our Father, Jesus didn't command us to say, and give us lots of bread for our whole life. He doesn't say that. He says, give me today our daily bread. Give us today our daily bread. And we remember in, 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 in the book of Exodus, when the Lord rained down manna from heaven, he let them pick the manna, but only enough for one day. Because he didn't want them to worry about tomorrow, except for on Friday they could pick enough so they wouldn't have to uh, work on Saturday, on, on the Sabbath. But again, the Lord's showing that, hey, let me take care of you day to day. And so again, in the Our Father, there's this reminder of the spirituality of God's daily care, living one day at a time and trusting that He's going to provide for today. Is He going to provide for tomorrow? Absolutely. But I'm not going to worry about tomorrow because that's His problem, not my problem. My, my problem is enjoying this day and living in the blessing of this day. And then finally, uh, Psalm 95, verse 7, Oh, that today you would hear His voice. And what a good reminder at the beginning of the day. Lord, let me hear Your voice today. That's how I want to start my day, Lord. I want to start my day remembering that this is the day You have made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. That this day is holy. Rejoicing in the Lord is my strength today. The joy comes in the morning as I'm beginning my day. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is to be praised. And Lord, give me today my daily bread. Help me not to worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. And Lord, let me hear your voice today. And so this is very practical. I'm giving you, uh, sharing with you a very practical way. Now you don't have to, I'm pretty intense. You don't have to start with seven scriptures. Maybe just one of those. You know, I thought of making a mug. You know how you can get mugs, like printing on them? I thought of making a mug with all those scriptures. So when you're having your morning tea or your morning coffee, you can just kind of look at your mug, you know, and, and kind of go through your... Isn't that a brilliant idea? Anyways. So, so anyways, if you want to start with one scripture or three scriptures or whatever, and then I also thought, like, this is, this is a Bible I just got a little while ago. It's a little Bible. Um, and I have them all marked, so I thought I could put this Bible by my bedside because i i believe there's grace obviously in hearing god's word there's grace in reading god's word i believe there's also grace in holding god's word and i believe there's grace in having god's word close to you so you have you have god's word right next to you so when you're when you get up in the morning the first thing you do i guess after you turn your alarm off is you reach for god's word because jesus commands us to live our life based on his word you reach for God's Word, and you, you, you proclaim God's Word, and you remind yourself of God's Word, and, um, and allow the Lord to bring joy with that. And again, that's, that's the, 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 the wonder is the joy the Lord gives us when we live in His presence. It's just, it's wonderful and it's awesome. Now, I want to continue. Uh, again, uh, the last scripture I shared was, Oh, that today you would hear God's voice. And we pray again, Lord, let me hear your voice today. And the truth is, and we hear this in John chapter 10, verse 27, as disciples of Jesus, we are meant to hear his voice. Not necessarily audibly or, you know, whatever, but in the depths of our hearts. And Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. Did you hear that? Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. And that's us. Do you hear his voice? We should hear his voice. He says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Now I want to share with you, that was the first thing I wanted to share with you. I want to share with you uh, 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 something else very practical. Now again, Jesus says, if you want rest for your souls, you need to come to me. A very practical way to come to the Lord. Again, first of all, you can start your day with scripture. Secondly, talk to God all throughout the day. Just keep talking to God. Now I learned this from St. Faustina. You see, growing up, 
I thought that when you talk to God, you know, you need to kind of get into a higher state of being or you need to use special words or you need to only say, you know, uh, novenas or, or, or prayers like that. And those, those are, you know, vocal prayers and all that, they're all good. But in St. Faustina, Jesus reveals that he, he wants us to talk to him very simply. Let me share with you some passages from her, her diary. Jesus says to St. Faustina, I am very pleased that you confide your fears to me, my daughter. Speak to me about everything in, complete, in a completely simple and human way. By this you will give me great joy. I understand you because I am God-man. Again, some people think, oh, to communicate with God, you know, because He's infinite, we need to, you know, whatever, sit in a certain position and kind of work ourselves up into complete recollection and enter into a higher state of consciousness. No! Jesus is God become man. We can speak to Him as we would speak to, to our friend. Jesus goes on to say, The simple language of your heart is more pleasing to me than the hymns composed in my honor. Know, my daughter, that the simpler your speech is, the more you attract me to yourself. Did you hear that? The simpler your speech is, the more you attract me to yourself. The Lord wants us to speak from our hearts. We don't need to say, O oh, great and ineffable God, O oh, highest wise being who thou vouchsafe to look upon us with me. You don't need to talk like that to God. You can talk to Him as you would talk to a friend. Again, St. Faustina, she shares, she says, O oh, Jesus, my master and my director, it is only with you that I can converse. With no one else is it so easy to talk as with you, O oh God. Can you say that? Can you say that, boy, God is so easy to talk to? I hope you can. St. Faustina goes on uh, in another part. She shares, she says, At that moment, Jesus asked me, My child, how is your retreat going? She was on a retreat. And the Lord Jesus asked her, My child, how is your retreat going? Now, St. Faustina, she gives a very honest answer. She says, she says, I answered, But Jesus, you know how it is going. Like, you're all knowing. Like, as if you need me to share how it's going. And Jesus' response is, Yes, I know but I want to hear it from your own lips and from your heart. You see, again, Jesus is in love with us. He's more in love with us than we could ever imagine. He's more in love than a, you know, a young person infatuated with, with you know, a, beautiful, a, a beautiful girl or a young girl infatuated with a, with a handsome young man. You know, like when, when someone's in love, like say the girl who's in love with a, a young mechanic, and he comes, comes to her and he says, oh yeah, you know, today I... Was, you know, I was working on a carburetor. It was all gunked up with oil. And it was such a pain. We had to, you know, blow out the jets. Well, she doesn't even know what a carburetor is. But she loves to listen to him. He could go talking about his mechanical work all evening, and she just loves to listen to him. That only happens when you're infatuated. That wears off pretty quick. But with God, it never wears off. It never wears off. He delights in us all the time. For all of eternity, He delights in us more than a person who's infatuated with someone. His love never grows cold. And so again, He knows how things are going, but He wants to hear us talk about it anyways. It delights Him. Again from St. Faustina, Jesus asked her, Why do you not tell me about everything that concerns you, even the smallest details? Tell me about everything and know that this will give me great joy. I answered, but you know about everything, Lord. And Jesus replied to me, yes, I do know. But you should not excuse yourself with the fact that I know, but with childlike simplicity talk to me about everything. For my ears and heart are inclined toward you, and your words are dear to me. Again, these are words of a lover. And there's no one who loves like God himself who is love. So again, there's such a simplicity to approaching God. When Jesus says, come to me, what's a very simple way of doing that? Just talk to him. Thank him for things. Talk about what you're concerned about for the day. If you have questions, share with him, you know, how your, you know, how much you enjoyed your pizza or how good your sandwich was or like everything. Share as you would share with a friend. Again, another passage. Jesus listened. Jesus was, was or, or St. Faustina was kind of lamenting or complaining to the Lord 
and she writes, and again, this is kind of amusing, Jesus listened to these outpourings of my heart with gravity and interest, as if he had known nothing about them. And this seemed to make it easier for me to talk. And the Lord said to me, my daughter, those, those words of your heart are pleasing to me. And there are so many other passages, you know, where again, the Lord assures St. Faustina and assures all of us. Because again, this little diary that St. Faustina wrote, it wasn't just for St. Faustina. Jesus knew that one day we would be reading this and he would be teaching us through it. And again, what we have, what St. Faustina teaches us is nothing other than what we see in the Gospels. A lot of us men have made the Gospels more complicated than they are. You see, when Jesus was walking the face of the earth, he was rubbing shoulders with a bunch of fishermen. He hung out with them. He ate with them. He walked with them. They asked him questions. They asked him silly questions oftentimes. Jesus answered those questions. You know, sometimes we see God, you know, like say, if you want to visit a king or visit the pope, especially years ago, if you want to see the pope, you know, you'd be told, okay, stand here. When the door is open, walk like this, do a little bow, this, that, kiss, you know, don't kiss his ring, you know, don't ask questions, just answer questions. Well, it ain't like that with Jesus. With Jesus, who is the king of kings, we can approach him as we would approach a friend. There's none of that. Now, obviously, when, we, when we're speaking with Jesus, we always need to remember that He is the all-holy God. So we should always speak to Him with, with deep reverence. But yet, as a friend, we speak to a friend. And again, when we live in this presence with the Lord, He gives us joy. Our souls find rest. And that's what He wants from all of us. Again, He says to us, come to me. For an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Father Mark Goring on our morning scriptures, we invite you to write to us. Our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. When you write, ask for an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Father Mark Goring on our morning scriptures. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at going nowhere fast. Again, I was going nowhere fast. Not only was I going nowhere fast, I was going in the wrong direction fast. And so many of us, when we encounter the Lord, when we hear His voice in our lives and in our hearts, we realize, I've been going in the wrong direction. We would like to thank you for your financial support of the Food for Life television ministry. Food for Life is funded only by viewers like yourself. We have no commercial sponsors. Your tax-deductible donations help pay for production of the program, pay the television station for the time that the program is on the air, and pay for the mailing of our monthly newsletter. Thank you again for your support of this Catholic television ministry. We count it such a privilege to join you in prayer. Many requests come to our office each week and we pray over each one faithfully. Although we can't acknowledge each one in writing personally, we faithfully pray and stand with you in your prayers. We would also invite you to write in when you have an answer to prayer. Sometimes the answer that you have can just give a word of hope to someone who's still waiting on God for their prayer to be answered. And wherever you're at, whatever circumstance you're going through, we encourage you to remain steadfast in prayer. Colossians 4.2 says, Devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving. Wherever you're at, whatever you're experiencing, it's important to remember to thank God even in the midst of the trial. That might sound a little odd. My husband and I have been beset with many trials, and one of the key words that my, my husband felt the Lord saying was, keep thanking me, keep praising, keep praying to me. We must always be thankful, even in the midst of the trial. And the truth is, is that even in that challenge that we're experiencing, God has a plan and has a purpose. I think of Jeremiah 29, starting in verse 11, one of my favorite passages of Scripture. It says this, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for welfare, not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. 
then you'll call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. There's nothing like a trial to bring us to that place of really searching for God. I know that as I've gone through many challenges and, and trials, it's in those times that I really do seek God with all my heart. And God is there for us, and He will let us find Him and experience His presence and His comfort. And it is through continuing to pray, worshiping and praising Him through the trial, and giving thanks that we can find perfect peace. You know, the good news is that we don't have to have smooth sailing in our lives to enjoy peace. Peace can be ours even in the midst of trials because God is the one who gives us that peace. I think of Philippians 4, verses 4 to 7, another favorite passage of mine. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your forbearing spirit be known to all. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all comprehension, shall guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You can have his peace in the midst of it all. One day as I was praying, and I've been praying a long time for a certain request, and, and the Lord just hasn't answered it yet, I remember feeling discouraged. And we do go through those times of feeling discouraged. And I said to the Lord, I just need a little indication from you that you're working, just a little sign. And God is so faithful to do that if we just ask him. And then out of the blue, the phone rang, and a dear friend of mine who serves on the board of directors of Food for Life said, you know, Kathy, I was thinking about you today, and I want to tell you something. God's delay is not his denial, and that's key for all of us to remember. Just because the answer to prayer doesn't come immediately, and we all know that our prayers don't always get answered immediately, it doesn't mean that he's denying you the request. God just has his perfect way and his perfect timing of bringing that request to pass. So continue to pray. Remain steadfast. If we can pray with you, we're glad to do that. But most of all, place your trust in God, who loves you with an everlasting love. For an audio CD or video DVD of today's ministry, we invite you to write to us. When you write, mention the program number 1514 and today's topic, Father Mark Goring on Our Morning Scriptures. Food for Life is a nonprofit Catholic charity funded only by donations from viewers. To help us continue this Catholic television ministry, please send your tax deductible donation to Food for Life. Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. To save postage, you may now make your donation online. Just go to our website at www.foodforlifetvministry.org and follow the link. If you have never donated before, we ask that you make your check payable to Food for Life, and our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, N4Y2T8. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at going nowhere fast. Again, I was going nowhere fast. Not only was I going nowhere fast, I was going in the wrong direction fast. And so many of us when we encounter the Lord, when we hear His voice in our lives and in our hearts, we realize, I've been going in the wrong direction. For an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Father Mark Goring on our morning scriptures, we invite you to write to us. Our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. When you write, ask for an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Father Mark Goring on our morning scriptures.